the uh, world of death here in the Spoy High XE-X D2-9 system is a metallic um, or rocky landable planet that orbits uh, that white dwarf that we can see right there. Um, most of the time, for about 75% of the orbit, it's within the exclusion zone. Um, and for about uh, the another 15% of that time, it's within the dwarf, but uh, or within the jet of the dwarf, uh, but outside the exclusion zone. Um, and that last 10% is neither, and that's the point at which we can make the landing. So, um, without further ado, we're going to do we're going to pull up the system map. It's the very first planet in the system here. Um, lots of carriers out here right now. This is the only landable one. As you can see, it's 0 0.74 light seconds from this white dwarf, um, and it is a metal rich. Um, but what we want to look at here is the orrery view, um, so we can see where it is in its current orbit. Um, unfortunately, this view is not live, so we're probably going to have to request the refresh it a couple times um, in order to uh, figure out where it is and where it's going. So right now, um, it looks like it's on its way in um, on its orbit. I've had this view up a couple times. I just I happen to know that that the bottom half, so to speak, of this orbit is on the way in. We totally cannot get to it right now. Um, the exclusion zone is about out here or so, and the top half of this um, is where the dwarf, uh, the, um, the uh, jet cone is. So we need for it to be um, out of the exclusion zone and out of the jet cone. So if we try to land on it um, while it's in the jet cone, we'll be in normal space and we will get destroyed. I actually did a practice landing on it yesterday in the keelback um, and kind of blew the landing window a little bit and wound up uh, in the jet cone above the surface. I was able to park, but it was it was kind of a just barely thing. Um, it's the, because this orbit is so small. It's really difficult to tell um, which one of these is closer and which side of this is farther away. I believe the side that's closer to that B star um, means that it is on the way in. But we'll verify that in a second. If it's on the way in, when I refresh this view, um, it'll it'll be closer to the A star. And if it's on the way out, it'll be over here. Um, we want to catch it. Um, we actually want to catch it on the way out. Uh, so this this we may have to be a little patient here. This orbit takes about an hour. Um, it it does go rather fast. So once it gets to about here, it just kind of goes yoink around. Um, and then uh, rockets back out the other side. It slingshots, and the view is outstanding. Um, but we do have to wait for the right moment to approach. So let's uh, let's go ahead and, and verify our observation. Uh, see if it's on the way in or out. Just go right back into the system up here to have a look at that. Lost it. There it is. Oh, it's on the way out. Okay. It's clearly on the way out. It's much farther um, along here than it was before. So that's actually good for us. We'll be able to make our approach pretty soon. Then. Um, so it looks like, yeah, so the, the, this line is closer. Very hard to see perspective here, but this is closer to the B-star. So the closer part of the orbit to the B-star is on the way out. Um, when we just looked at it a moment ago, um, it was about here. Now it's here. We're going to need to wait for it to be about here before we can enter it um, and make that landing. And we're going to want to make sure that we complete the landing and get out of the ship prior to about here. Um, because the jet cone uh, will uh, basically shoot straight out along this whole half of the orbit. And uh, the ship will take damage as long as you're in it. Um, so you have a couple options. Um, you can either stay on the planet with the ship as long as you're out of it. Um, or you can stay on the planet and dismiss the ship. Um, I haven't decided what I want to do for this video yet. The uh, caveat, if you keep the ship on the planet, well, it makes for pretty pictures. You can't drive very far because the ship will try to dismiss itself. If it dismisses itself in the jet cone, it will start to get tossed around and could potentially be a problem. If it dismisses itself inside the exclusion zone, I honestly don't know what happens. My guess is it will glitch to outside the exclusion zone. Um, but I'm not willing to bet this tutorial on a glitch. So we're just, we're going to do it safely um, and just leave the ship either parked or dismiss it before we get into the danger zone here. So uh, we're going to refresh, and my guess is the planet's probably about here now, a little more than halfway up. 
Um, if you do have a ship that runs hot, you're going to want heat sinks. Uh, because we're getting very, very, very close to the star. Um, so heat sinks are going to help you stay cool if you begin to overheat. Okay, we're about halfway point in the orbit. Um, I'm going to get off the carrier and make my approach. Um, it's still not enterable at this point here, but it's getting close. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and get underway. We'll go ahead and target it. Now you notice I've already scanned it into a whole bunch of geosites. I um, recommend you do scan it. The geosites make targeting for landing easier. This is not a tidally locked body. Um, so you can't pick one geosite and know that that geosite's always going to give you a good view. We're going to have to apply some uh, deductive reasoning when we get close to the planet, and that will uh, help inform um, what uh, point we set down at in order to get the best picture. You'll, you'll get a good view no matter where you set down, but you can get some exceptional views if you uh, set down while the, uh, the dwarf is in the, uh, in the sky and it stays there. So we'll go ahead and uh, lock this destination here. I'm not going to pick a geosite yet until we get closer, and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and I just make sure I do have an SRV. Yes, I do. We'll launch. my mic volume if you want to decrease your volume, but I'm not piping the game uh, sounds through here. Uh, that's all. Uh, drive operating beyond safety limits. Can't talk and fly at the same time. So don't do that. That is one thing you definitely don't want to do. Alright. Uh, turn around and point at it. What I want to do is I want to approach the planet from below. And when I use the word below, I mean in the context of it being below the uh, jet cone. That looks way closer to the star than it did in the orbit. Definitely can't get into it there. That's true. Logan says I can make the game quieter. It's in the options. I can do that. We'll do that. We'll be courteous to our viewers here. We'll do sound effects down here. And music down there. Oops. There we go. I aim to please. Um, okay, I'm going to check the or review again, because that I definitely can't land where it is right now. Much too close to the star. You can see the orbit line on there, and it's the, the planets right next to the star. Did we read that wrong? No. Or he says it's still on the way out. See if I can get a better angle of that orbit line. Maybe I just have a perspective issue going on here. Yeah, Kaidmore's uh, 2.2 light seconds to 2.3 is the safe zone. Um, and if I target the star, we're going to be a lot closer than that. Oh. 2.9. Maybe I do have a perspective issue going on. Let's get a little closer. Because the orbitary says we're alright. The 
start to hear the... That's just about as close as I'm willing to get to the star. Now we're at 2.17. Let's just hang out because it looks like the orrery is delayed. We can see the planet is coming towards us. Is the uh, where I'm more or less stationary as slow as I can get in super cruise. I want the planet to be over here. Danger indication on the ship saying that we're uh, we're gonna hit. But I think Net Steel is right. I think we we are we are dealing with a perspective issue here. I'm gonna squeeze a little closer, at least until the game draws an exclusion zone or warns me that I'm gonna impact. I can hear the star now. We're we're getting awfully close, but I think we're still okay. And if I do smash it, I would like to smash it out here where I'm not in the cone. seconds from the star now. I mean, it, it's, it is moving in the right direction. It is, it is perceptibly coming towards us now. Um, which is good. And actually, this motion is kind of helpful because it tells us a little bit about where we want to park. So the planet is going to swing all the way out along that um, orbit line and then come all the way back in. Um, and so I actually basically want to be on the far side of the planet uh, from where I'm pointed right now uh, to kind of get the best view. So if I park where I'm sitting, the star will be be below the horizon. And if I park, uh, if I park kind of at the top there, the star will sink below the horizon before coming back. I'd like to get the star to stay in the sky the whole time. And the good thing about this uh, this particular landing, the way we've gotten real close here is we might be able to reposition if we need to. So we're, we're going to be clear to land here. We're going to be pretty safe. Should stay out of that um, cone until we get on the far side of the orbit. Now the planet is... we're cooking here. We're moving. I'm not cooking. The ship is fine. Let's see if I can just kind of capture it get into orbit as it's running away from me. There we go, now I'm in orbit. You could see for a bit there the, uh, the planet was actually almost exceeding the ability of my ship to keep up. So what I'm going to do is get an orbital cruise here. Orbital flight engaged. There it is. And I'll just get into free fall and kind of whip myself around to the other side. Now it's deceiving, you can see the planet is illuminated red right now, that's not from the White Dwarf. That is from the B-Star. The uh, Elite only supports one source of lighting at a time. Um, and you won't get the uh, light from the Dwarf illuminating the planet until you're very, very close to it. And so just because we park on it now while it's uh, night, doesn't mean it's going to stay night. It, it's basically going to switch, it's going to flip. So I'm going to try to basically park this star uh, above me on the horizon so that it stays visible for the whole approach of the planet. And if I can do that and get near a geosite, that'll be great. Planet. Yep. 
What's closest? Geo 3, where are you? Behind me. Yeah, we're not gonna go that far back. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have the opportunity for a geo signal here, but I'm just gonna park it down right about here. One thing to note, as you see there in the HUD, this is 1.15G right now as we're on approach. Um, so do make sure that you've got uh, thrusters that can accommodate that. Shields are probably a good idea. I did actually smack the peel back pretty hard yesterday. It lived because keelbacks are fantastic and awesome. But it was unnecessary. Don't do that to yourself. After all that effort of getting in here, um, you don't want to die because you pancaked on the planet. We're two kilometers above the surface. Go ahead and throttle back when we hit 1.5. And where should carry us through? apply a little down thrust just to get us on the surface sooner rather than later. Let's see if we can find ourselves a spot to park. see if this is a good spot. If I did this right, it should be up in the sky, right above us. Yeah. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, um, if you're in the ship, it will take damage. Um, the uh, thing to do now is you want to get out in the SRV. Um, when you're in the SRV for whatever reason, and this is true for Odyssey, or excuse me, it's true for Horizons. I cannot guarantee it's true for Odyssey. Um, the ship will not take damage if you are in the SRV and the ship is still on the surface. Um, safest option is, of course, to uh, send the ship away, which I may do just so we can drive around and, and find stuff with our pulse wave scanner or wave and analyzer, waveform analyzer thing. Turn that on so we can see. Is on. Take the parking brake off so we can go. Admire this uh, large, of course, green ship of mine. A little hard to see in the current lighting. Um, but I did a pretty decent job with that. Oh, I'm not done. Oh, no way, Logan. Uh, we're not getting out of this easy. This, the landing's the easy part. Um, now we get to wait for the fun part, which is what's... This is going to just work its way... If I did this right, it's going to work its way slowly in the horizon to about here. Um, right, or, right about there. And then just kinda, it's going to whip around to the other side of the planet yeah, in a huge hurry. Um, and the skybox will rush at us. It's going to look super cool. Um... But this is kind of now we just have to hurry up and wait because we, we are just waiting for the orbit to do its thing.
Here we go. Here it is. Look. Look. Coming back. Oh, this is going to be a good view. Star is coming back up above the horizon. Check that out, everybody. Check that out. And it's, it's still not done. It's getting better. It's getting better. just going to shut up now and let you watch. JP, hold off on the group images for a little bit, because that throws up a huge black privacy box on the stream. Yeah, that, that is the world of death, everybody. We congratulate that white dwarf star for that stunning appearance across the horizon. That, uh, I had to zoom all the way out to capture that. So that was actually a pretty good vantage point after all. The star tricked us for a bit by sneaking below the horizon and then it came back and ran over the top of us. It's quite a view. So there's there's no wrong place to land on this planet. Um, I, I wanted the view to come across the top of me. I wanted the star to come across the top of me and that's what I got. Um, so if you land um, with a planet between you and the plume and you going under the planet and then you position the uh, white dwarf above you in the horizon, you'll get the view that I just got. Um, if you park on the dark side of the planet, um, you'll kind of get it the other way around, um, where the planet will, uh, or the star will peak up and then go away, and then uh, do a rapid sunrise on the other side. Um, and really, you can be anywhere. You'll, you'll get some kind of um, amazing view. Um, and uh, it's quite lovely. It's worth worth the wait. At least it, it's worth the wait for me. Um, and uh, I hope uh, I hope you have the opportunity to visit this place. Um, if you're with us on the Wild West expedition, of course, the waypoints will be doing meetups here um, Wednesday tomorrow for the Xbox folks, um, and uh, Saturday for PlayStation and PS4. If you're just out in the Colonia region, um, you can reference this to. Uh, complete your approach. Only downside is now that we've got the, uh, the the sites have been seen, we still have to wait. Uh, we can't leave the planet yet. It is still within the exclusion zone. So I'll take this opportunity to go back to the uh, the system map here uh, in the aura review and kind of explain what just happened and how you get here. So, whoa. Let's... 
There we go. Okay. So you can see the planet is now climbing away from the star. When it gets to about here, um, I'll leave. Um, in order to approach the star, you want to approach it when it's here in the orbit as well. So from between here and here in the orbit is the safe zone, here and here. When it gets to the uh, periapsis, the, um, it'll be within the uh, jet cone and uh, it'll toss your ship around and you'll blow up. So you've got from here to here, which is roughly about 15 minutes, and you, if you rewind to the beginning of the screen, stream, um, you can see that I got it, basically. I landed right at the start of the safe point um, and it got the whole 15 minutes to find a position. So don't have to rush. Uh, you have time to scan and map the planet, find those geosites, and find a good landing spot. But you do have to be prompt. Um, and again, if I uh, zoom out and find the B star, you'll find um, that if you if you angle this just right, you can see that the star climbing out is going to be closer uh, in proximity. Its orbit is going to be closer to the B star um, than it is on the way in. So kind of use that as a reference. If it's climbing, uh, well, first, if it's moving away from the A star, obviously it's, it's climbing out. Um, if you're just kind of looking at this map, trying to figure out where it is, which way it's going, um, because this map doesn't update in real time, uh, just see if you can get the, uh, the B star in frame. The orbit line on the side closer to the B star is going to be the planet climbing out and away from the A star. In other words, making itself available for your landing. Um, so again, wait until you get to about here in that orbit to about here um, to make your landing once you get to periapsis and all the way back down you can't land. The exclusion zone is roughly in this ring that I'm tracing here. So you've only got uh, just the tip <laughs> to, uh, to land at. So from here to here um, is where you want to land. Bear in mind that the planet's moving fast. Um, so what I did is I approached it, basically I came at it Wow, oh, jeez, this map is snapping around on me. I'm trying to be helpful, and I don't want it to be. Um, I came in... I'm going to stop trying, because that's super annoying. Uh, Jesus, H. Okay. I came in basically from below the planet, right? With the jet plume up here on the other side of it, and then parked myself on the far side of the planet, um, so that the A star was directly above me um, on my horizon. And it stayed above me the whole time, almost, uh, before dipping below the horizon um, and then coming back for the final moment. So I um, approached again from what would relatively be described as below. I came from this, this side of it with the plume. Basically, I put the planet between um, me and the jet plume of the star, which would be up up in this area, um, and then came at it going in this direction, uh, and then landed uh, where you can see that marker is, so that the uh, A star um, was directly above me in the horizon. So came at it from below, um, went around until the A star was above me in the horizon, and parked to get that view. If you wanted to keep the star above the horizon the whole time, just go a little bit farther than I did and have the star kind of behind you in the horizon. Use caution if you start turning while landing, it's very easy to get disoriented. Um, so if you uh, come at it from below um, and uh, behind, just kind of fly at it with the, basically with the, um, the A star directly ahead of you until it's directly above you and you'll be in good shape. Um, and so that's, that's the theory behind the approach. You saw, the, the, while a little bit disorganized, the practical application of that at the beginning of this uh, video, this stream. Um, so if you want to see that in, in practice, um, you can uh, do that. Um, uh, just rewind to that point. Um, I'm going to now attempt to demonstrate the departure from the planet. So I'm going to just refresh that, see where we're at. Now we shouldn't be in the jet plume, so I should be able to get into my ship without it experiencing any damage. Um, but if we're in the exclusion zone, I'm not going to be able to depart. 
um, we should be coming up on the safe safe zone here. So if if this is a clock with the A star at nine o'clock um, and the planet currently at six, I'm gonna wait to about um, 4:30 before I, I make my escape here. So I, I am going to go um, board. I'm going to go board this at this time. Now, if we are for some reason still in the jet loop, which I don't think we are because I can't hear it, the controller's not rumbling, uh, the ship will start taking damage immediately. If, if you do that and experience that, just get back out. Um, you, the ship will survive a couple seconds of it. It won't survive it indefinitely, um, but it will survive long enough for you to get back out. See what our status is here. Okay, safe and sound aboard ship. So I'll just continue to be in the ship uh, for a little bit longer. We'll check our position. And as as you, anyone saw at the beginning of the stream, this 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 can be, this ah, that's probably why I thought I was uh, um, you know a spot different than I was. The carrier I came from is visible right there, which definitely would have given me a weird perspective on the orbit line um, while on approach. Um, so basically, trust your instruments, trust this map to see where the uh, the planet is um, in co relation to the star and uh, use that to determine when you're going to make your approach. Again, 4.30 to about roughly 3 o'clock is the safe zone in this, in this orbit um, for your approach and landing and then uh, subsequent departure. Um, so trust that. And if the planet's in a safe position on this map, then you should be okay to fly into it. Um, again, you are going to be flying very close to the star, so take a ship that can manage its heat, um, and uh, you'll be right as rain. And if you uh, feel like bringing some heat sinks along, it's never a bad idea to have heat sinks. We'll bail you out in case, uh, in case your ship does start to cook. Uh, so we will be, we'll be making a departure here, probably, we'll say at 2350 on the clock. That's probably going to be a safe spot to do that. Then I'll just head back to the carrier. Um, and uh, we'll be in good shape. Yeah, we're getting real. We're, get, we're getting pretty good, far along. Um, so if you're if you uh, want to try this, I would recommend if you've never done it before using a cheap or, or replaceable vessel, um, rather than if you've got an exploration anaconda. Um, I wouldn't use that on the first attempt, just because uh, the rebuy will hurt. And uh, we should be about ready to, to make uh, the departure here um, from the planet and uh, get out safely. Just uh, scroll in one last time. Yeah, we're in, we're in good shape there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this show on the road. Bearing in mind, um, if you saw that plume, which is now below my ship, don't fly towards that on your departure, or you'll get um, potentially um, sucked into it. So don't do that. I am going to set course for my filters so I can see my carrier. Lock destination on that. I cleared mass lock, so drive charging. head on out now, and I'm, I'm going to pull up from this uh, position and away from the planet make sure that everything is safe as possible because until we exit uh, orbital cruise and altitude we are still with the planet gravitationally being pulled along with it um, which will mean if, if uh, we don't exit orbital cruise by the time the planet goes in the jet plume we're going to get pulled along into it and have all sorts of problems which is also not ideal so just uh, stay on this escape vector you can see my ship is warming up if you listen carefully you can hear the sound of the, the uh, white dwarf there it is. Um, so we, um, we're still very close in proximity to it. Um, 
just continue to gain altitude here, get above the orbital cruise altitude, and uh, now I'll pull up and away from the planet, like that, get it out of the danger zone, and then pull towards the carrier. You can see the game is trying to figure out where I am gravitationally, that's what that jitter was. There we go. I have, I have escaped the gravitational pull of the planet safely. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, you can also high wake out. Just find a system above you in the horizon and then high wake. And you, um, you won't have to deal with, with that that I just did there. Because that, that can be a little disconcerting. Um, so there's that. that's an option available to you as well. So that's, that's it for this Tutorial Tuesday. That was the approach to landing on viewing of an exit from the world of death. Um, I, I hope that was useful. I know it was kind of a, a bit slow there while we were waiting for the planet um, to uh, get in range. Um, nevertheless, that's uh, that still, um, I, I thought that view was excellent, um, and uh, I hope it was worth your while for those of us who uh, first who stuck around on the stream. Um, as I said, I'll probably redo this on Thursday in case anyone missed it or in case anyone was a little uh, unclear on the process I used to, to get in because it was a little, I was, I was a little bit flustered at the beginning having futzed around trying to get audio hooked up and having malfunctions there. And I got it down, I knew what I was doing, but if you were watching me it might have been a little tough to follow. Um, so I think I will, I will probably do that again on Thursday. Uh, for anyone who would like to see that um, in a more uh, straightforward and uh, easy to follow fashion. But for now, um, I'm pretty much done. I'm just going to park it on the carrier here. Um, that will conclude tonight's stream. Case. Jesse's still around. I don't know if you're still in the stream or not, Jesse, but I have observed uh, that I am backwards prior to the time. So, unlike before, go ahead and fix that instead of having a threat to kill me. So, there no need for clips of my landing shenanigans today. Although, I didn't mind uh, the, the first one that was there. And there we go. And of course, uh, we did take a little damage from having been in the jet. Uh, no big deal there. So that is, uh, that is how to approach, land on, view, and depart from the uh, uh, White Dwarf uh, and the Planet of Death. I hope, that was, uh, I hope that was worthwhile for everyone. I do thank you for everyone that, uh, that came into the stream today and participated in the, in the comments. Um, and it looks like Netsteel made it off. Excellent. I'm glad to see that. So that's going to do it for the, the stream today. Uh, looks like JP's made it off as well. Glad to hear. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can, of course, get me in the Discord. Uh, wildwest.space slash Discord. For anyone who's not in it looking to join, wildwest.space slash Expedition. For anyone looking to join up with us at the last minute, uh, anyone trying to reference the schedule can find that at wildwest.space slash slash schedule and of course the stream occurs at wildwest.space slash stream we'll do a tutorial tuesday every tuesday a thirsty thursdays every thursday and a uh, waypoint meetup every saturday i have the schedule posted on my switch twitch channel uh, for your uh, viewing convenience so uh that's it for today everyone i thank you for uh for coming out for sticking around enjoying the sights with me I hope you all have a great evening, and we will see you star side. Yeah.